Hello and welcome to this video. This video is for unit three. Uh, so uh, you will need your book. Uh, so please go and get your book if you don't have it already. I will wait a moment for you to do that. All right, welcome back. So we are thinking about unit three this time. And so for unit three, we are thinking about technology, right? So if we look at the first page of the unit, we are thinking about uh, technology, IT, uh, but as we can see, we're also thinking about things like parallel structures. First, to give you some idea of how much technology has changed. I'm going to show you the first cell phone I had. So this was my first cell phone. It's a, a Nokia and this, I was 20, 20 or 21 years old. And so this was uh, my first cell phone ever now, compared to the phone that you have right now, uh, let me reveal some things about it. So firstly, uh, there was no way to back up your phone. So if you lost your phone, well, you lost it. <laughs> it was All your phone numbers were gone. All your text messages were gone. It was impossible, right? You bought a new phone and that phone was entirely new. So you lost everything. It was, uh, you had to manually enter the phone numbers. So when you got this new phone, everybody that you know, you had to just like off a piece of paper, you had to manually enter the name and the phone number for each person. So changing phones was a huge, huge problem. <laughs> and also if you lost your phone, like say there's no backup, you've lost everything. So you have to manually input the numbers you can remember or the numbers you had a piece of paper for. And all you could do was phone calls, texts, and there was a, a game called Snake that was just uh, a game with a line on it. Yeah, so that was it. You, you could call somebody, text message somebody with no emojis, or you could play one game called Snake. I think some, some phones had two games, but it originally just had one. And there were no apps, so that was it. You had phone book text message and a game there was no gps so no maps nothing like that couldn't help you it was literally just a phone that you could also message from so that maybe doesn't sound great however it did have some advantages to it so first advantage is that uh, the battery lasted a week literally like a whole week. And if you did not text much, maybe more than a week. So a, the battery was amazing. Like you would dream of having a one week battery these days with a smartphone. Uh, also, it was relatively cheap. Like uh, it was only like a couple of hundred dollars, I think maybe less than that even. So if you lost your phone, well, it's, I mean, it's annoying because you have to put your number into, uh, into the phone book one more time, but you know, it's not that expensive. And the most important one, they were indestructible. They were so, so hard to break. Like if you drop your phone, it's fine. Like the screen doesn't crack. They are indestructible. You cannot break them. So dropping your phone, 
there was no panic. You just, ah, it's okay. It's going to be fine. And so, in fact, these are one of the secrets of the Nokia phone is if we look at Wolverine, if we look at Wolverine's claws, his adamantium claws, and if we go in deeper and closer and closer, they were actually made of Nokia phones. See, that's how amazing it was. So before we look at our vocab, let's think about the topic for today. So the topic would be, as we can see from the title, uh, driverless cars. Okay, so not just electric cars, but cars that are driven by non-humans. So firstly, I'm going to give you some questions and just a moment to think about your own answers, your own opinions. So just take a moment and just think about these questions. Okay, so I'll be quiet for just a moment. Have a think about them. So these are legitimate questions, right? These are questions that uh, by law or culturally we need to think about what does it mean to have a driverless car? What does it mean for responsibility? So these are quite important questions. If we think about, for example, even smartphones these days, they're not every smartphone works together properly. Not every smartphone is running the newest operating system, OS. Uh, is that going to affect safety? For example, if there is a critical update for uh, operating system for a driverless car what happens if only 25 percent of drivers update the software or somebody has a very very old car running very very old software that is not supported anymore you know just like uh, s smartphones cell phones old phones are not supported by every operating system so again where does responsibility come like should you have to buy a new car every five years just to make sure you have the latest software possibilities so these are some real uh, kind of moral and practical questions that we need to think about with our driverless cars So before we do the reading, here are the vocab for uh, this reading. So we're on page 56 right now. Uh, so I have color coded them. There are no adjectives this time. Uh, so we have data, limitation, manufacturer, obey, obstacle, occur, respond, sense and the benefits of so a little noun phrase there so some important things to think about first uh, so firstly uh, if we look at this bottom one here the benefits of this is a nice fixed phrase a nice little collocation uh, 
so here we have the plural benefits of. Uh, however, we should remember that uh, it can also be a singular. So the benefit of. So if there's only one, uh, you could say the benefit of. Uh, however, in this case, we're going to use the plural, so benefits of. Uh, so yeah, so just bear in mind that it can be both. And because we have OF, so it starts with a vowel. So for pronunciation, it's going to take the previous sound. So it sounds like benefit and that t sound kind of disappears. So the benefits of. So it sounds like t, s, o, f, t, s, o, v. Actually, it sounds like a V sound, not an F sound. So benefit, t, s, o, v, t, s, o, v. So t, s, t, s, o, v, t, s, o, v. Benefit, t, s, o, v. Okay, so again, we can think of the spelling and the pronunciation as being two different things. So the benefits of, benefits of. Little bit of a stop, benefit. Your throat kind of closes, called a glottal stop. Benefit. So no air gets out, benefits of. Really, really quick. Uh, also thinking pronunciation, if we look at, we have two words, uh, we have three words here, starting with the letter O. However, pronunciation is not the same throughout. So we have obey, so let's call that a strong O sound, O, obey. Think of it as sounding like the letter name, O. Next we have obstacle, o obstacle. So it's a very, very short kind of sound, like a uh, obstacle and occur, occur. Uh, uh. It's Actually, the, the occur, uh, it sounds more like something called a schwa. So schwa is not actually a, a vowel sound, technically. It's just a uh sound. Uh. So it's not really, you're not saying occur, and you're not saying occur. You're saying occur. So that sound, it's uh, called a schwa. It's kind of a uh sound. So imagine like being like punched in the stomach like oh. so it's just air coming out of your mouth very quickly so not occur not occur but it's occur occur so really really short it's just a uh. it's just breathing out basically you can always practice just by punching yourself in the stomach if you need to if you're committed all right so pronunciation would be obey Obstacle occur. Obstacle occur. It's not obstacle, not occur, occur, uh, but occur. And for pronunciation, D A T A. Some countries say data, some countries say data. Uh, Australia, for example, would say data. Um, not not important which, yeah, it's okay. So data, data, however you're feeling. Okay, so that's our pronunciation for now. Okay, so if you have not already uh, read the reading Cars That Think, uh, you can pause the video now and just go and read it. So that's page 57 and 58 okay so you can pause the video and go and read it and then we're going to come back and think about uh, some of the language in there okay so feel free pause the video right now all right welcome back so hopefully you've read them already so we're going to think about uh, firstly our main uh, grammar point or grammar norm for this class. So I'm going to show you two sentences and I want you to think which one is better. 
Okay, so which one is better? So here's number one. Here's number two. Okay, so just take a moment and think which one of those feels better. And when you've chosen one, think why. Okay, there is a reason. <laughs> there is an actual reason one is better, but think which one is better and why. Now, hopefully most people chose number one as the better example. Now, like number two, it's not it's not criminally bad. Uh, however, there is a reason that number one is better. And that reason is something called parallel form or sometimes called parallel structure. So this is an important part of how we combine information in English and how we uh, give lists of information. Uh, so it's a good way of not, not using four sentences when actually one sentence would do it. Uh, but there is a way of combining that information. So what we need to do first is go to page 75 in your book. So page 75 and have a look at the grammar for parallel structure. Okay, so the grammar for parallel structure. Okay, so just take a moment. Uh, again, you can pause the video and just read that uh, section, so parallel structure. Okay, welcome back from reading that. So if we look at our examples here, example two is breaking that parallel structure or parallel form because we have a noun, convenience, noun, flavor, and then a short phrase at the end. So it is located near my house. Uh, you're breaking that pattern. Okay, what we really need is a pattern. So with the first example, if we look at it, we have a good taste, so noun, speedy delivery, noun, reasonable prices, noun. Uh, so you have Adjective noun, adjective noun, adjective noun. That's okay, but just noun, noun, noun would be okay. Equally, just adjectives would be okay. Good, speedy, and reasonable. Yeah, perfectly fine. It's good, it's speedy, it's reasonable. Uh, however, what's important is that there is a pattern of the type of word that you're using. So we're not mixing it. Uh, so if we look at the example in the book, uh, so the second example with machines. So machines make our coffee and clean our dishes. If you say machines make our coffee and are cleaning our dishes, uh, again, there's nothing grammatically dangerous about that, but uh, it feels really uncomfortable to read. And people maybe don't understand what parallel form is, but they do understand patterns. So that's what we need to think about. What are our patterns here? So let's go back to the reading and see if we can identify some of the patterns. Okay, so we're going back to the Cars That Think reading, so page 57. Here we are on 57, uh, paragraph one. 
Now, first thing, before we get into our uh, parallel structure, parallel form, uh, I want you to notice our topic sentence. So topic sentence, thanks to modern technology, humans have less to do. Really good, solid topic sentence here. It's really setting out the theme of actually the whole writing. Uh, it's really short. It's not asking a question. It's just giving a really clear, short topic for what you will read about. So yeah, I'd say for a topic sentence or a beginning sentence, uh, this is a really good example. Nice, short, and sweet. So staying with the same, uh, same paragraph, now that we have thought about parallel structure, have a look at this paragraph again and think, what parallel structure can you see? Okay, so again, take a minute. You can pause the video if you need to. So what parallel structure can you see? Okay, so there's a, a few examples here. Uh, obviously we have make, uh, make our coffee, etc. So from uh, the book example, but we also have robots do the vacuuming, mop the floors and mow our lawns. So again, we just got these little verb phrases just using simple present. So do, mop, mow. So not robots do the vacuuming, have mopped the floors, and have been seen mowing our yards. All right, so we're not mixing uh, the style or the, the uh, tenses. We're using the same type of verb or the same tense again and again and again. Okay, so down here we also have, while we read the newspaper, or sorry, yeah, <laughs> now past tense. So whilst we read the newspaper or worked on the computer. Okay, so again, using just two simple past verbs just right there. Okay, so we're not mixing the types. This could have been two sentences, but it's kind of a waste of space, right? Feels very start, stop, start, stop. Lots of short sentences. So we're going to combine them, but we need to combine them in a way that has a parallel form, a repeating pattern. Let's have a look at Paragraph four, okay, so same reading, paragraph four. Okay, so again, have a look. Can you see any parallel form in there? Again, you can pause if you need to pause. Well, we can see a great big one right here. So drivers can make bad judgments, get sleepy, and run a red light. Okay, so make, get, run. All right, let's keep going. How about paragraph five? Can you see any parallel form in paragraph five? Okay, so we have it here. An officer tells or a pull off the road. So uh, it may seem like a simple concept. In, in some ways it is a simple concept. Uh, however, this is a really, really common um, error in non-native English writing uh, is 
combining ideas and sentences, which is great, but uh, not matching the parallel form or the parallel structure. So really common kind of writing uh, problem. Okay, so what we're going to do this time is look at some examples of non-parallel form, so mistakes with parallel structure, and see if we can fix them. Okay, so number one, uh, I washed the dishes, was sweeping the floor, and washed my clothes. So this is kind of a nice fairly simple one that we can fix quite easily. So we've got a uh, past progressive form just creeping in here. So we have washed, washed twice. So nice and easy, we can just change that to swept the floor. So we just have past, past, so simple past, simple past simple past. Okay, so in the second example, so I love BHC chicken. There's a, there's a lot of chicken talk uh, in this in this one, but uh, you can replace it with other foods. Uh, so I love BHC chicken because of it being so close to my house, the cost and the taste. Again, we have the cost and the taste, so it's probably easier to change uh, this part here. So we need some kind of noun attached there. Uh, so you could say, for example, the location, or if the register is correct, if the context is correct. You can go for a hundred dollar word. Proximity. So, I mean, proximity is fine. Uh, again, it, it's probably unlikely that you're using such high formality words uh, talking about loving chicken. Uh, so, yeah, probably the location is the, the best option there. Let's look at number three. So the tourists visited the village and took photos and things were stolen. Hmm. So this is uh, an interesting one because with stealing, because it's not a nice thing that people don't want to accuse somebody of stealing. So they often use this form, which is passive voice. Something was done. You're not saying who did it. You're just saying something was done. Uh, so in this case, the person tried not to say the tourists were stealing things. Uh, however, we are still breaking the uh, the parallel form or the parallel structure. So I would say here you have two choices. Uh, so you could simply just change here. Okay, so simple past, simple past, simple past. Okay. However, if you are still uncomfortable with being so direct, another option is you could change the entire sentence to be passive voice. So for example, uh, the village was visited, photos were taken, and things were stolen. Okay, so that's another option. 
uh, maybe not the best uh, option, but again, it depends what what you're trying to say, what kind of writing that you are doing. Maybe just simple past is the best option. All right, let's think about the next one. Uh, we were driving through the countryside, ate donuts and breathing fresh air. Okay, so again, we have this pesky problem of uh, having an ing and an ing uh, but then just a simple simple past here so nice easy fix eating donuts and breathing the fresh air okay again nothing too difficult there just nice easy fix okay so last one dogs are loyal reliable and bite criminals now this one is a little bit more difficult because we're kind of changing the we're changing the structure right we've got adjective adjective and then a verb and a noun coming so again it might be better to restructure this completely so thinking about what's the most important part of the sentence. In this case, my best advice would actually be to make this uh, a separate phrase completely. So dogs are loyal and reliable and if, <laughs> let's say if provoked, they bite criminals okay so yeah in this case uh, I feel like it doesn't really match just as a, a list of three things so we can actually just kind of make it uh, a separate independent clause uh, so again yeah not not everything is just replacing a word or changing word sometimes it's better to actually restructure the sentence completely so when you're writing, you can just use your own judgment as to what is the best way to do these things. Okay, let's do a review of what we've thought about uh, in this lesson. So firstly, uh, you don't know how lucky you are with the, the modern phones. So there are some advantages, but uh, yeah, these were these were very basic phones that we started off with. So yeah, be thankful of, of what yours can do. We thought about the moral questions, the ethical questions about driverless cars. Who is responsible? Uh, what kind of qualifications do we need? Thinking about safety you know we're kind of assuming that it makes us more safe however we don't know we certainly don't know yet as i record this we thought about our vocab for our reading and specifically thinking about the different types of pronunciation of certain sounds uh, so, for example, benefits of, where the sounds get combined. So, benefits of. Yeah, same like piece of, piece of. Uh, that these little short uh, kind of what are called function words, like of and the and through. Uh, if they start with a vowel, that they are going to take the previous sound so piece of cake piece of cake so p of cake and we thought about the different types of o or o sound that's on obey obstacle and occur so again that schwa sound it's s c h w a if you want to look it up S C H W A schwa. Uh, again, again, imagine just being like punched in the stomach. It's that uh sound. 
All right, so looking at our vocab, then we did some reading. And we thought about our important structure for the day. So parallel form, or sometimes called parallel structure. And we looked at parts of the book to kind of notice those types. Uh, so again, it's, it's something that seems very simple. Uh, and in some ways it is, but it's very easy to forget. So uh, when you're doing your writing, just give one pass over it, just thinking about parallel structure. Okay, is anything uncomfortable or awkward to read? Uh, so yeah, it's always worth checking in the same pass that you're checking spelling, your punctuation, your articles. Uh, just to keep in mind, uh, look for some of those parallel structures or parallel forms. Okay, so thank you for watching. That has been our video for unit three. All right, thanks. I uh, hope it was useful. Hope it was useful, practical, and usable. There you go. A bit of... Uh, bit of parallel structure for you. Okay, thanks for watching.